press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hi viewers, welcome back again to HVC Simplified, the online training channel. Viewers, the today's topic of the day is types of chillers and their major components. Today we are going to see the different types of air cooled chillers and the water cooled chillers and their major components with their detailed clarifications. This video, let us start with the chiller types, which is also known as vapor compression chillers technology. Any chiller is classified as a water chiller and any water chiller is known as an air cooled chiller and a water cooled chiller. The major components of both the air cooled chillers and the water cooled chillers is a compressor. A compressor can be reciprocating, screw, scroll and centrifugal depending on their classification and their capacity requirement and their built up. So, Either it is an air cooled chiller or it is a water cooled chiller. These are the major four compressors. So let us start with the air cooled reciprocating chiller. If you see here, this is an air example of an air cooled reciprocating chiller where the compressor type is known as a reciprocating compressor. Next, air cooled scroll chiller. Here you can see a scroll chiller, and this is the scroll of a compressor air cooled screw chiller here you can see this is a screw chiller because the compressor of this chiller is known as a screw type compressor yes water cooled screw chiller yes the word there is a water cooled screw chiller also where you can find the same screw compressor water cooled centrifugal chillers a centrifugal water cooled chiller is known as a centrifugal chiller based on the centrifugal impeller compressor yeah this is the compressor for a centrifugal chiller yeah so basically any type of air cooled chiller and water cooled chillers are having major components so let us describe those components compressor like i said earlier the major component are four types of compressor the function of the compressor is to remove the refrigerant vapor produced by the evaporator and to deliver the refrigerant. It is required at a high pressure. The compressor pumps the refrigerant in gaseous form from the evaporator and compress it that is rising its pressure and the temperature so it can be condensed to a liquid into the condenser. For this, I recommend you to review the refrigeration cycle and to know how a complete refrigeration cycle happens to understand what a compressor does in a complete refrigeration cycle. From there, you can understand it better. Here, I am going to explain you the major compressor types and its working principle. There is a positive displacement compressor and another is called a dynamic displacement type of compressors. Yes. The major two types are positive displacement and dynamic displacement. In a positive displacement compressor, a certain volume of a gas is trapped in a space that is continuously reduced by compressive devices. Yes, in a positive displacement, a certain volume of a gas is trapped in a space that is continuously reduced by its compressing device. In a dynamic type of compressor, the gas is compressed by being accelerated by an impeller. The pressure is further increased in the diffuser where the speed of a transformer into the pressure. To explain it easily that it in a dynamic compressor, a centrifugal type of impeller is used through which the refrigerant passes and transforms. This is known as dynamic type of compressor. Compressors by types of construction. Now let us see how many types of construction of a compressor are. Open type, semi-hermetic type and hermetic type. 
usually they are known as open type compressor semi hermetic compressor and the third one is known as hermetic compressor now in a open type compressor the motor and the compressor housing are mounted separately yes in any open type of compressor you can see they are two separately mounted and used in a large size capacity no shell compressor components are accessible for repair and replacement yes in an open type compressor it is not cannot be repaired and replacement that's why it is known as open type compressor whereas here the difference in a semi hermetic compressor the motor and the compressor parts are housed inside a two piece shell and cover bolted together used in medium size capacities bolted shell and cover compressor components are accessible for repair and replacement yeah as these are bolted shell type and the cover compressor components are easily accessible for repair and replacement this is the major difference between an open type and a semi hermetic type compressor whereas in hermetic compressor type the motor and the compressor parts are housed inside a shell yes if you can see here used in a small size yeah closed welded shell compressor components are not accessible for repair and replacement even in a hermetic type compressor a closed and a welded shell compressor components are not accessible for repair and replacement so open type and hermetic type now let us see about the fans of the air cooled and water cooled chiller axial fans axial fans discharge air parallel to the axis of the impeller rotating high efficiency condenser fans with motors these are the fans which are used in any type of air cooled chillers next major component is a condenser and in air condensers are of two types for first condenser is called an air cooled and the second type of condenser is called a water cooled chiller by the name itself you can see that two terminologies the normal function of a condenser is to transform superheated discharge gas from the compressor to a slightly subcooled fluid flow by transferring heat from the refrigerant gas to a secondary cooling medium yes the major function of a condenser is to transfer superheated discharge gas from the compressor to subcooled fluid so a compressor sorry a condenser is a component which releases the refrigerant by interacting with air if you are using an air cooled chiller the air cooled condenser and if you are using a water cooled chiller the refrigerant is mixed with a no, it's not mixed it's a heat transfer from a water cooled side the most common secondary cooling medium is air and water yes like i explained in both the cases in an air cooled condenser air is used as a medium and the water cooled chiller a water cooled issues here you can see it clearly in any air cooled condenser the air is passed from here and extracted from the top of the discharge of the axial fan whereas in a water cooled condenser you can see the refrigerant is passing through a shell and tube and the water is acting as a medium to releases or to and transfer the heat superheat refrigerant inside the tube of the condenser coil are cooled and condensed by the surrounding or ambient air with the use of condenser fans like i said exactly it is used by a air cooled medium with an axial fan or called also called as a condenser fan superheat refrigerant enters the shell of the condenser which is cooled and condensed by the water flowing inside the tubes cooling water can be pumped from either a cooling tower city water or a sea water yes in a water cooled condenser it is called a shell and tube type where water is will act as a medium now we are going to see the expansion valve 
expansion valve controls the quality of a liquid refrigerant entering the evaporator it ensures the refrigerant will be completely vaporized within the evaporated and maintains a proper amount of superheat into the system yes the expansion valve is one of the major part made of the major fourth part of the refrigeration cycle here be it any refrigeration cycle from starting from anything expansion valve is one of the important factor shell and tube evaporator now let us see the evaporator types the one evaporator is known as a direct expansion evaporator and the second type of evaporator is known as a flooded cooler evaporator so in a direct expansion evaporator if you can see a shell and tube evaporator is used to produce chill water in this type of evaporator the cool air cool liquid refrigerant flows through a tubes and a water fill in the space surrounding the tubes if you can see here there are shell and tubes here and the coil cool liquid refrigerant yeah remember the liquid refrigerant flows through the tube a heat is transferred from the water to the refrigerant the refrigerant boils inside the tubes and the result of vapor is drawn to the compressor water enters the shell as one ends and leaves at the opposite side ends yes here as this is we are using a shell and tube this is called a chill water water cool type of evaporator the chill water is pumped to fan yeah if you can see here i can tell you show you again to the compressor and from the expansion valve here you can see a water inlet and a water outlet so this is the shell and tube where your chill water will be happening or you can say it is acting as a secondary refrigerant also shell and tube evaporator the chill water is pumped thank you very much viewers thank you